I originally, I'm originally from Texas, and this picture shows that I, uh, uh, I had this drawn up to remind my children so that they could have this history saved for them because the, the home is no longer there. My history started here because to the right here was a big cotton field which was owned by my relatives. And I wanted to pick cotton one day, and I was only about eight years old. And therefore, I like the cotton that's here, I, uh, I was given a croaker sack, and in that croaker sack I was able to place, you know, I was only a seven, eight years old, and they put, my auntie, she put a, she placed a strap on me from a man's uh, uh, necktie. She put it on this croaker sack, and that's how my history, you know, I became interested, in, and from then on, we were always picking cotton. And I didn't realize my history because my auntie, she, when she gave me this croaker sack, she didn't tell me anything about my history. I cried because there was injustice to my ancestors. And the shackles is still on today. We have lost our identity. This country, America, was built on the backs of slaves. It became the wealthiest nation on the face of the planet Earth because of the slave trade and the peculiar institution of slavery. Imagine uh, where you work. If you were to collect the checks of every other employee for the next 24 months, no one else got money, but you got their money. They did the labor. At the end of that 24 months, you would be pretty well off. Imagine a people in the millions working for 310 years with absolutely no income, no compensation for their labor. I saw pictures and the images that they put in the books, and it just didn't seem right the way that they portrayed them and how they looked. They were proud people, even in the fields that they worked. We need to have more uh, education, uh, education needs to enhance, be enhanced with more African American history and just the true history of the United States should be incorporated into some of the textbooks as a curriculum. Not just one teacher doing this on their own, but it should be something that they've got to have. And I think this is why they're just lost because they're just like wandering because they have no anchors. Um, reading the records of many of the slave owners, uh, how they sold many of our ancestors with the cows and the pigs, the spoons and the forks, and looking at a human being being sold for $900. Uh, that's not even something that some of us can uh, visualize in the wildest dream of our uh, worst nightmare, but it is a nightmare that uh, many Africans in America uh, had to deal with and still have to deal with. And to think about your relatives, once you really know, to think about your relatives in, in the, on the slave ship, once you know, you really know that that actually happened to your relatives. And it's a fact because you really know it has really changed my outlook, you know, on um, on uh, on everything. It's important. Uh, this genealogy is so very, very important uh, because, as a result, you know, I have to uh, help other people. You know, it's a necessity because it will give it will increase their self-esteem. Right now, they oh. The, their immediate parents may not be as exactly what they want them to be, but when they realize from where they were descended and how strong their older ancestors were, they were strong physically, emotionally, to have survived the, the trip over here and uh, they persevered through all of this. And they are here because of the sacrifices the others went through. It's a very hard life, but I would say that my family now um, has overcome some of the barriers that was put before them. But there's still a lot of things that we need to accomplish uh, from slavery 
you know, you are held in bondage for so many years and we are trying to catch up and we can never catch up. Emancipation Proclamation. Um, the great president, Abraham Lincoln, understood the English language, but he didn't use the word freedom. He used the word emancipate, which is from a Latin root, and it means to free from the hand, but not from the control. So we can now take the shackles off the shackles that you see there. We can take the chains off the body because we have successfully put chains on the mind. Genealogy leads us right back to who we are, right back home, so that we can become nation builders once again. Genealogy is not a hobby, it is a necessity, it's who you are and everything that you hope to be. Many people take genealogy as a hobby. I could understand that, I could appreciate that, but when it gets to the Africans in the diaspora who've been cut off from their history, their language, their culture, their folk ways, etc., then genealogy becomes vital in finding out exactly who we are. Marcus Garvey said, a people without their history is like a tree without roots. And this genealogical research has helped me connect to my roots. So I believe that it's vital. Not only does it give us uh, self-esteem or help to build that self-esteem, but it helps us to be able to look every other people on the planet in the eye and speak on a one-on-one -on -one basis about who we are and what we've accomplished. There was some question about uh, genealogy being a hobby. Mm -hmm. You know, no, it's not a hobby. It's definitely not a hobby. And uh, because uh, a hobby is something that, uh, that you do for relaxation, for pleasure. But uh, we do not do that for, uh, for pleasure. Because you, you, once you find that your family is in the inventories with the with the, slat, with the horses and the cows and all of that, that brings a different dimension to this. For the young people, uh, believe in yourself, uh, look at where you come from and, and, and deal with uh, where you are today and bring yourself up to the standards that our ancestors have set for us. Um, what I, I've done, I was into genealogy prior to knowing I was into genealogy. So I think that a lot of the young people now, uh, they don't know their history. And, and because they don't know their history, they don't appreciate where they are and how they got there because no one is telling them, telling them the truth. And maybe some of us choose to forget, but I can't forget. I cannot forget because I'm too afraid that if I forget, then America forget. And then America will try and, and the same people uh, somehow can try to create another slavery system if I choose to forget. Where I, what my ancestors had to go through. I felt help, happy to see other other students know where they come from, know where their ancestors. But it also made me feel sad to see that our, to see African American students didn't know where they come from and didn't know much. From the first year I started teaching, I started teaching African history in second grade to the children. Uh, and I would tell, I would show some of them that you know the high cheekbones that they're part. Indian part this and I taught them even in 60 don't hate anyone because you're part of like everyone you're a mixture uh, and it, it I started collecting things and buying things and bringing it to my classroom so that they could see the crafts and the artwork and I taught just taught that it wasn't on the curriculum but I taught it and eventually my collection of things grew so large, I started inviting other classes. And then eventually the principal every year would let me put stuff all across the stage. Uh, we don't have the write-up to go with it, to explain things. And some adults had never seen things like that and didn't know anything. So I'm, I'm still doing that. I'm lecturing now. You know, I travel with some other things. They call it a travel and exhibit. I like to help the African-American students to see where they come from in Africa. Uh, to know their ancestors and, and know genealogy and do genealogy.